Hello and welcome to everyone watching the Written and Melanin channel. Wherever this day may have found you, we are so glad that you are here. Today, you guys, this is a spoiler conversation with Bethany C. Morrow, and of course, I'm here with the case Marie Cousineau, and we are going to get into the nitty gritty details of A Song Below Water. At the time of this recording, it comes out on June June 2nd of 2020, but when you guys see it, it'll be in the far future after it has been released. So go buy it, read it, enjoy this conversation. Um, that being said, this conversation is going to be full of spoilers. So if you have not read the book, then proceed with caution. If you don't care about spoilers, then good on you. Fantastic. All right. So ladies, let us get into this and just so you guys know who are watching this in the future we were just literally talking to (laughs) bethany um so there's also an interview on the live stream that's not full of spoilers and we were just talking to her about her character altruism and the protest scene in a song below water and obviously we can't recreate the conversation but you guys (laughs) i love okay i'm gonna take a moment i want to gush about you because when I read your book, I was just like, I love how it's it's light because it obviously is about Tavia and Effie and about them just being high school girls trying to find their place in the world and depending on each other and just like living life, right? But then there are also these moments and I think I told the case because we read it together and I was just like, there are just moments where it's just like really heavy and I'm just like, I love it and at the same time, it's just like that's kind of how life is. Like you're just going. Yes, that's our going. life, and right? Like, you were like you said it was like a Thanksgiving dinner. Like you yes. were just so full. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. you're there and you're reading it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is great. You've been looking forward to it. You sit down. You stuff your face. You're happy, and then yeah. your auntie comes out and she's carrying a whole ass pie, and you're like, oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we both had to like take a minute after we read. We're like, Whew. yeah, like okay. I'm still marinating with it. Like there's yeah. so much in it, yeah. and it's so good. And the reason why so I'm excited, I'm excited to talk about it with you right now because this will be my first spoiler-filled oh. conversation. Yes! So I. Say, I haven't actually been able okay. to like talk about the book, talk about the book yet, yes, because right, obviously right. when we are recording this in the past, we are from the past, yes. um, <laughs> the book hasn't come out yet. So all yes. of my interviews have been very much on theme or on like just the overview of what's happening, but you can't like really talk about it. Yeah. <sighs> so let's yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Let's do it. So let's what is, first of all, let's just start at the beginning, right? Um, these characters. Mm-hmm. Tavia. Um, I know that you said in the the nicer interview that she's named after Octavia Butler. So she's yes. it's not Tavia. It's so it's not Tavia, it's Tavia. To be fair, I'm pretty sure I read it as Tavia the entire time. Um, I think when we talked about it. We high five. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I, side note, that's completely unrelated to anything. Like, I have a degree in speech language pathology, so we learned, like, language and sounds, and I'm just like, I don't understand how in English you would read that as an ah, when clearly if it follows two, if the I middle t- two consonants followed by another vowel, it's an I a. too did phonics and then did Greek and Latin roots, and so I Ooh. too sometimes I'm like... How did you get that? How'd you get that? Where'd you get that? <laughs> to be yeah. fair, English is a monster beast of stolen properties, yeah. so... It's, it's like it's it's hilarious when I'm like when you're doing German or English or, or French and it's like oh how would you say this in German or French and you're like like that it's we literally just took it and then we yeah. just pronounced it differently it's it's yeah, still we got it from you we just changed the way you pronounce it yeah we did so <laughs> that being said Tavia is obviously pronounced Tavia and then Effie and then with those names you also have names like naima and then priam and then altruism and then portland because it's in portland (laughs) yes very west coast Coast. and i'm like okay she gets it but i was like maybe it's just a me thing because i'm not west coast i've never even been to the west coast i'm very much are you serious 
hundred percent. I am from North Carolina, East Coast, oh, okay. and then relocated to Texas. So I'm not even like oh southern, wow Southern Midwest. I've never seen. It's like on my bucket list to go to the Pacific Ocean because I hung out on the Atlantic Ocean a lot. Yeah, but I want to go to the Pacific Ocean so that before I die, I say I put my feet on both sides in both oceans. I don't know yeah. why it's dumb. Whatever. No, it isn't. It's, it's th- those are our two. Those are our two oceans. <laughs> so you have to. So, um. I just want to know, like, where the names come from, but apparently it's a West Coast thing, so that is. Well, I mean, in terms of, like, it's, you know, it's a character, it's a character, caricaturization, if I could just make up a word, um, no because I, as soon as I knew it was going to happen in Portland, um, Portland is known for being so ridiculously, insufferably hipster oh, that, yeah. like, that, like, of course you named your daughter altruism. Um, it's also known, and I don't know if it's in this book, I'm pretty sure, right? There's a, uh, at some point, just randomly, there's a, um, a news, uh, reporter and her name is Tamantha, but she's a, <laughs> she's a white woman. And they're like, if she was a black woman, that'd be ghetto. But since it's yep. Portland, you know, so you have a lot of like yeah. Keisha, you have like a lot of white girls yep. walking around with names like Keisha and stuff in Portland. And like, yeah. and you're like, it's so funny. Cause if we did that right when we did that when we do that it's like oh it's so it's a ghetto queen and it's like but you guys okay Okay. um but then names like priam and stuff i was like i'm just trying to think of what are isn't priam the the king of troy um because is it yeah i think the i think the king's name is priam right so i was just like what's something like that's part of known mythology, but that's obscure yeah. enough for a hipster to be like, I'm going to use that. Um, so, for, right. So, yeah, it was very, very true to West Coast culture, Definitely. how they're named. Know, you guys should watch Portlandia. They capture oh, that gosh. so well. <laughs> I feel, okay, spending, spending as much time in Portland as I have, I literally have to watch that show in, like, bite-sized so servings. Good. Because my skin will peel right off. Like I will break out in hives. It's so crunch. Like it's so cringy. Right. I'm like, right. this is so true. But I tell my sister all the time, like the first time I go out again, like downtown or something, or like, I don't know, to the Pearl District or something when we're in Portland, the first time I go, the, the next time I go to Portland, I the thing that, I, that always stands out to me is actually just this like smug look that people have so there was one time we're like i think we were going to where were we going we were going to powell's or something and we're we were because we're walking across the street i'm like describing this like that'll make you know it better so like we're crossing the street coming up to powell's and this guy has these like handlebar mustache and he's wearing suspenders and of course the and of course his pants are high waters and he's wearing these like boots with them and these like striped socks Uh, oh no 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 no. like like boots like if you were actually going to like pan for gold or something oh i hate it i hate it so but he's walking but he's walking across the street and he literally is like always like i look so good i was like (laughs) i stopped in the middle of the street i was like jennifer i will burn it to the ground like (laughs) what is it he was he was so proud of himself. I know I'm gonna offend people who live in Portland. Obviously, my sister's whole family is important, and they are not like this. But Jennifer, earmuffs right now. If you're Jennifer, if you're if you're listening to this, earmuffs right now. My sister is a lot more hipster than she thinks she is. Like you are, you're maybe you're maybe hipster light in Portland. But outside. Oh. But outside. Uh, we're, we're trying to go find some place to eat. She's gonna be so mad at this. Should we go to find some place to eat? And she's like, "Oh, what are their what are their vegan options?" And I'm like, oh, I "Okay, I, I love her. I know, I know, right? I understand." And it's like, and obviously, the place that I wanted her to go did say they had vegan options because it's Portland, um, or just like gluten free and and vegan and something else. Um, Obviously, some people actually have needs. Some people actually like need that for a reason. I'm just saying it's like it's the most Portland question. Like, of course, if we're going out to eat, you're going to ask that follow up question. Um, I love that I only slightly refer to the eating habits of the Phillips family just because Effie's like, sometimes I want gluten. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like I love them, but like sometimes I I actually want gluten. So. Oh, I love that West Coast solidarity. Okay. Yeah. Something that has always confused me, kind of a side note, is how like when something is vegan, gluten free, and all these other options, I'm like, if it's vegan, isn't it necessarily kind of all these other things? As well? I don't know if that's the case for for gluten, but I do know that if you go into the grocery store, and this is in California too, if you go into the grocery store, they will proudly affirm that something is gluten free that doesn't have gluten by nature. Yes, like a banana. <laughs> like it's of course, like of course it's gluten free. Because it's yeah. it was made that way by God, yeah. Um, yeah. so there's no need to tell me that it's gluten free because it couldn't possibly have gluten in it. Anyway, Correct. that's just a West Coast thing. That's just a side yeah. show. <laughs> like, yeah, so I'm so I'm from I'm from Northern California, um, and and okay, okay, so I made Tavia from Santa Cruz because I went mm -hmm. to UC Santa Cruz. Um, but I've lived on the West Co or the West Coast, the East Coast for a decade. Um, right. So and most of that in Montreal, uh, Quebec, and um, and then some in North Country, New York, which literally is just on the border, and nobody, including yeah. other New Yorkers, knows where this is. Um, so that's where I spend my time is between those two places. So even though I'm on the East Coast, I still have a very like Quebec experience of the East Coast, and yeah. I spend a lot of time in New York City. And people are like, "Oh yeah, so you're just always." I'm like, "No, no, no. That's just when I go to New York City. Like New York City is a, is a different East Coast." I yeah. would say than like Quebec East Coast. That's like the Northeast. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like I'm learning so much in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have to go to the West Coast though, and you have to tell me when you you're do. going because it's I, so I want great. To go so bad, like it's on my bucket list. Like I'm, like my family, they're very like they're they're those people who don't travel. Like they travel, but like may anything that's like a day's car ride, anything further than that, planes, I love trains. It. I love it. We don't do. So like when I decided I was moving to Texas because my husband is from Texas, my parents were very much like, what? You're doing what? No. He's stealing you away to where? Right. I was being kidnapped against <laughs> right. my will, even though right. it was 100% my idea. They just accepted that as we've been here for five years. They just accepted that a couple of months ago. So um, I want to go to California. Just haven't had the opportunity yet. I want to go to New York. Never been in New York. Um, I want to go to like Seattle, Washington. I want to go just because I hear it's, it's so much interesting. We need I, to do this. I want to go to so many places. I just There are so many. The there are. Well, I want to go to North Carolina, and I'm literally writing, <laughs> literally writing a book that's like set on Roanoke Island, and I'm I like, I, I, I really, it's so much research, and it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so oh, I yeah. love doing the research, but I'm like, I would really love to go, although I would probably yeah. be really upset, seeing as all of that land was uh, was uh, reparationed back to its original owners who were um, slave owners. So yes. that's cool. So North Carolina is still technically the, the very much, you know, the South. So like be prepared for that. But right. um, I, I thought it was cool when you mentioned it. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm from North Carolina. I know exactly where you're talking about. Yeah. So I, I love it. I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see what it's going to be about. But to well, your opinion specifically, I will be really interested in as somebody who's a present day North Carolinian. What do you guys call yourselves? Carolo, Carol? Carolinians? Carolinians? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Carolinians. But keep in mind that North and South Carolina are very different and they, I'm not saying we don't, don't get along, but that's something that non-North South Carolina people- I know that because my up. dad's mom is people from South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, South Carolina people are different. Okay. I know because my dad's Well, but they're South Gullah Geechee, so it's like- uh, oh, her. they're Gullah Geechee? Uh, so my, d however far back is my dad's mom, okay. my my maternal grandfather, grandmother, my paternal grandmother. Can I please word? Anyway, um, yeah. So that is, I know that that is also a very specific sort of South yeah. Carolina like yeah. upbringing or or experience or whatever. So yeah, so, well, definitely, but they weren't, you know, she, she, by that time, they were mainlanders, but it's just, you know, you don't, you don't ever stop talking about it, obviously, so, um, but I know that that's like a completely different, North and South Carolina are completely different. Um, we should talk spoilers! I want to yes, talk about spoilers! Yes, yes. <laughs> talk about Actually, the book. when you mentioned your skin crawling, I was like, oh, Effie! 
Yes. Yeah. Talk about that reveal. I was not prepared. Oh, not yay. I knew something was, I mean, we all knew something was happening. Ooh, got too excited. Um, <laughs> but when it was what it was, yeah. Miss Thang. Okay. I was. I ready. was. I love it because I was like, of course, everybody's going to know this the entire time because of her. Now, here's the thing with language. One of the things that you that that you have control over as an author is how you describe things. Like for my first book, Mem, I don't use the word clone ever in the book because I didn't want it marketed as a book about clones. And, you know, and so you can change the narrative sometimes based on how specific your lexicon in the book is. So with Effie, I called them statues or I called them sculptures. I never said turn to stone because that immediately yeah, says yeah. Gorgon, right? Yeah. So, as, or immediately says at least Medusa if you don't know what a Gorgon is. So I was like, I have to obviously have enough information here for the person to be like, of yeah obviously she's a gorgon without them on page two being like she's a gorgon yes yes you walk because a really fine line you, yeah done. you had me going because i was sitting here yeah. texting with case i'm like okay so <laughs> she's got to be a mermaid right no nope. okay not a mermaid maybe oh yeah like i was ahead and <laughs> yeah. i was like i don't know y'all have to wait to see <laughs> maybe she's a gargoyle is that what we're going with <laughs> it was like okay. oh i never no. heard that that's interesting I was with Effie because Effie thought that her, you know, her dad was a gargoyle. So I'm like, oh, maybe she's right. like a gargoyle. I oh, was on right. that trail. And um, yeah. yeah, no, and that's why you. I think that's why you have to, you have to have a couple of red herrings that you could, yeah, yeah, realistically be like, I could see why you would think that so yeah. i do think i do think there are going to be some people who know immediately because we know sure. what gorgons are um but i'm always happy to hear that somebody did it yeah, because i, I love that so crazy <laughs> yeah. because i studied latin from sixth to eighth grade so we i knew all of the, the like little mythologists and i don't know why it didn't catch in my head like it the, yeah. uh, medusa yeah. and right yeah Another side note, so crazy. Like I played a video game called Assassin's Creed and it's set yeah. in Athens. And one of the creatures I was actually fighting while I had to read this was a Gorgon. So I don't even Where know why. <laughs> She's like, I just can't figure out what Effie is. I, I just. I don't know. I'm just gonna <laughs> deal with the snakes me... and keep going. <laughs> Let me just play yes. with this game that's where she's directly in front of me. Um, yes. No, so I and I I knew she was going to have twists for that same reason. But I was like, oh, is that going to be too much? But I was like, the other thing was she's a swimmer. So I was like, yeah. OK, but realistically, um, if a black girl's like main part of her personality was that she was a swimmer, how you know what kind of hairstyle would be protective? Um, yeah. And and obviously, the longer your hair gets, the easier that is because it's just the weight of it will will keep it sort of tidy anyway but like yeah. um what is a realistic way that she would do her hair because she's a swimmer um but then it's also like of course it's easy for twists to turn to snakes when yeah. she transitions I love, that I love that imagery i love one of the things that an agent who offered on it um said was like i love that the moment of her transformation where people should be terrified it's just like a sister moment of like two sisters being like you're actually amazing you're this is actually my yes. favorite thing that's ever happened like, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was so cool let's do it again like, <laughs> well, yeah, like instead of like recognizing that we're in the middle of this like high school courtyard where there are people running around um either screaming or trying to get an, a view of what's going on i just want to take a moment <laughs> to You're tell you that you are amazing. Yeah. You are giving me life right now. You're killing it. Have you it. seen like, your <laughs> eyes? This is amazing. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. You look great. You look I don't so know why you're freaking out, honestly. Like, <laughs> honestly, I wish. Like, right. I could never. Like, that was probably the most realistic. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it because I was like, what would I do if my yeah. sister Jennifer <laughs> transformed into something? I'd be like, you're doing it. Oh, you you're like, doing what? it like yes. <laughs> I, love it I could <laughs> i could never i can't even <laughs> yeah so i loved that but i also loved i loved gar gargi i loved wallace yes! like, oh, wow. trans 
forming around her. I loved that. Yeah, and then it making too. sense why he keeps saying, do you want me to protect you? Like, can you please give me the go ahead <laughs> yes. to turn into a gargoyle? Yes. <laughs> like, I got what this. another reveal. <laughs> what another reveal. I mean, the fact that he was always there in the full clothes. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that he that. only ever wore that outfit. <laughs> She was like, uh, tracks. <laughs> tracks. Yeah. This makes sense. I loved I love when he Walden. was like, when they were at the tent, and he's just casually there, kind of naked and just kind of awkward. Just, and just right. Because Tavia, out of nowhere. Tavia's like, oh. Because <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, so so he wouldn't have immediately, because he's a gargoyle by nature. He's yeah. not human, right? He's yeah. not like a human who became something else. He's by nature he's a gargoyle so i'm like yeah he would he would transform and he would maybe know enough to like oh i guess i should cover this but you wouldn't think can you put some clothes on like yeah. what are you <laughs> like you need to actually produce some clothing please and then i love how tavia's awkward and effie's just like staring at him like wait what's happening i was like i love how she's just it. like boldly was just like yep that's him like all, all right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is <laughs> um <laughs> So good. Okay, one of my favorite scenes before obviously you know uh that Wallace is Gargi is when he takes them. It's the scene right after the protest. When yes! he takes them to the I nature preserve. Yes, I love it. But I also love the fact that like because I wanted I didn't want there to be any sort of love triangle, but I wanted her I wanted Tavia to have like a special connection yeah. so that this isn't like a somebody being left out sort of thing when the reveal actually happens. Yeah. And so I love the fact that Effie is like, do y'all know each other? Like, why are you talking to this stone <laughs> behemoth this way? And she's like, come down here. Like, come down. Let me get on your back. Um, I loved writing that scene also yes. because it was like, how can I realistically, what would he realistically do in terms of trying to protect them from what just happened? Which, okay, so we know what actually, what he's protecting them from at the, at the, uh, protest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Which is. The, the coloring the, and, um, no. no. Oh, the, the oh. police are starting to move in aren't uh -oh. they uh oh no oh, we missed oh, it no. oh okay tell us Ta no tavia is about to use her she voice, her voice. To no but gargi's okay. not her protector right He's Effie's <gasps> protector. Effie was gonna stone everybody. When no, her, her dad was there. Her dad! Her there was there. <laughs> that's why the people were running when but, they- But that's, that's why, why. He, he's wavy when she looks on the television oh, and, she's, right. and she sees yes. that people are are blurred, but he's not blurred, he's wavy. So he, she's like, right. something is standing between him and the camera. Oh. That's, that's why he took them away. Thank you. Oh my God. Enlightenment. <laughs> like, I'm not digging deep enough, apparently. No, I so I was because 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 here's the thing. It 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 has to look like a reasonable reason for him to take her, yeah. if you think he's Tavia's guardian. Yes. But then when you find out that he's Evie's guardian, okay, that can't be why he took them. Because that has that has no bearing on his, you know, the, she wasn't in any danger from that, basically. Uh, yeah, Te yeah. Tavia was, but Effie wasn't. So the reason he has to take them is because her father shows up. And when her father mm -hmm. shows up, she she it starts, starts. Uh, to turn. Um, Can we talk about her dad? Because I have so many questions that yeah. I just, like, I want to kind of bombard you with. But, I like, want to the... shake all the parents. Yes! <laughs> shake them all. Yes. <laughs> like, Tavia's dad, first of all, like, I love you. I love your book. But Tavia's dad can go jump in a dumpster and catch fire. I don't like him. He's this horrible Perfect. parent who, who teaches their daughter like that. But we're well, and here's but but here's the thing that I've told people like because somebody was like, oh, I love the way that you like you know respectfully show, and I was like, oh, I wasn't being respectful. He's 100% wrong. This is respectability politics, and respectability politics kills. Um, yes. The problem is I'm showing it sympathetically because a lot of times the people who enact it literally are terrified. I have no other idea of how to keep you safe. I realize that it isn't actually your job to 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 stay safe when there's an actual intentional in, institutional threat against you. But I don't know how to control that. 
I don't know how to control that thing. I, so I'm going to try to control my behavior. And that's what we're talking about when we say like, okay, how am I both the victim of it, but also in control of it? I'm not. I'm not. It can't be my job. It can't be my job to undo white supremacy because I didn't make white supremacy and white supremacy is on my actual neck. So, but if you don't, a lot of times when you have, when you're, it's just generational trauma, it's generational stress and just, you know, and that's where the epigenetic like issues and health issues that we have come from, um, is just having this perpetual persistent stress upon us. And some people, the way that they try to combat that is unfortunately with respectability politics. Yeah. So is it that he doesn't love his daughter? Of course not. Is it that he really thinks it's her fault? Of course not. Is he doing additional harm through the way he's responding? Yep. And I guess that's the part that got to me so much is because I'm just like, you can't possibly think this is the best way. Like, and I get, and, and that's the thing. It's like, uh, I get it. And I see the terror and I, and you wrote it so well. It's like, I see it, but also it's just like, I can't forgive you for that because it's just like, right. yeah. I yeah. can't, uh, like, and then at because the end, you wanna, because like, I'm still the one, I'm still the one who not only now had to deal with the stress and the trauma of white supremacy, but I also had I to deal with the trauma out. that you caused okay. because of trying to force yeah. respectability politics on me. Right. Yeah. And then um, the whole his whole obsession with Priam and thinking like, OK, he's going to solve our answers. I'm like, how? And, and to me, in my mind, I'm just like, you are literally auctioning your daughter off just so that you can feel more comfortable in your own home. If yeah. you feel this uncomfortable about it, move somewhere else with black people. Move uh, like you can move to Alaska, homie. Like, I don't but, know. But, but, that's, but that's the daughter. But the problem is we stay where we're safest now people will say why do so many black people live in the south if the south and still most black people in the united states live in the south yeah. and people will, will act like that don't make sense to them or whatever but that's where our community was exactly yeah. but that's where exactly. i'm like so so that doesn't make any sense to be like okay yes yeah, some of us now i've been raised in an in all white scenarios i'm a california girl i'm used to being around a bunch of white people all the time but for some people living in the South and living at least knowing that, you know what, my community is going to be pretty black. Now, am I going to deal with more outrageous, maybe a supposedly more outrageous racism? Sure. But I'm also going to have a community. What do you do when you're on the West Coast and you're in the Pacific Northwest and you got to deal with both? You're still so if you're tricking yourself into thinking like, oh, people aren't white people aren't racist up here. Of course they are. You just don't oh really have the same community up here. So the reason that he stays there specifically is because there's a network there. Yep. So yeah. there's yeah. a network there specifically. And there wasn't in Santa Cruz. Um, yeah. And it's still and it is home for him. He's from Portland. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the, the I don't I think it's kind of wrong to ever ask black people well why don't you go somewhere else what are you talking about we're not the problem <laughs> like True. i guess i, I mean we, so we can never with him for taking it out on tavia constantly yeah and, oh yeah, and, I, and you should be and i i don't want anybody getting the impression that this is me trying to like rehabilitate parents who okay. have and okay. elders who have relied on institutional blackness because it's an additional trauma that we've had to deal with yeah. And that's wrong. Like you have to know that you're doing more damage. If you're, if the point of what you're doing is to keep me safe, understand it's not working. <laughs> yeah, and it's one the one thing that could have. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I'm sorry. I keep talking over you. That's no, okay. The one thing that's so frustrating is, I guess, like you can't move away from it. It's everywhere. You can't. It's everywhere. Just wish it away, and I know that. And it's just like, but while reading it, that's like immediately where your mind jumps to. And it's just like, that's not the answer. The answer is you have to get rid of the problem and you can't just get rid of the problem because the problem is well, he, everywhere he, and it's multi-generational, the problem it's institutionalized. Was, and, well, I, I was going to say, he thought the problem was her and it's not her. And, and I thought it was so interesting that in trying to protect um, Tavia, cutting her off from her grandmother, cutting, cutting her off from that generational wealth of knowledge, mm -hmm. he put her in more danger. Right. Know, and exacerbated the problem. And that, that's what, like, just connecting with her grandmother could have saved them all that trouble. Oh, absolutely. Like, like, we can be our own worst enemies. Well, and she literally, they, they also, in order to keep from telling that she was a siren, they told a story about her that in itself is a huge trauma. Yeah. Um, 
that told people that she did something at this really young age that might fit with, unfortunately, the trauma that we have seen and the tragedies we have seen, but that's not what she was trying to do. And it sort of stole her um, autonomy in forcing that story on her because nobody asked her permission for them to say that she tried to harm herself um, or end her life because she was trying to quote unquote harm herself but it was literally just to get rid of the voice Um, so that in itself is like and and there's also the story of passing in this book obviously because she is she adopts a disability um, that she doesn't actually have And I think that there's something, there's a nuance that I wanted to deal with here that people who don't have passing in their family history maybe don't understand. It's not appropriation, it's passing. Those are two completely separate things. Uh, You know, appropriation is like, I don't experience the negative life experience and stigma of this thing. So I'm just going to use the thing with no and giving no with taking no responsibility and giving nothing to the people who suffered in order to to have this thing that's that's their own. Passing is literally I have to lie about my personal identity for my own survival. The motivation is um not the same it's world of worlds apart so my concern was that people would be like well this is really wrong because what about you know um people with disabilities or disabled people who are like well why did you use this it's literally demonstrating showing somebody adopting something because what they are is unacceptable Mm -hmm. and it's an actual historical fact of of black american history Um, many times you had to do this and the and the 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 peril of being found out was not insignificant Um, so Mm -hmm. she of course in order to explain why she can't speak sometimes and in order to uh, shield herself from being seen and known as a siren she adopts this identity of having um, Oh my gosh, I just left my it just left my brain. It's a dysphonia. It's a dysphonia. Yeah. Yeah. Um so spasmodic dysphonia. So she adopts this because it will explain to people, oh, she physically can't talk. So we can't force her to talk. And that is why she learns sign language. Um and I also wanted to show sign language from a loved and respectful perspective. And a choice. And a choice. Um, so, and, and I loved that being something that they shared and it worked really well with Effie because she's a mermaid. So there would be a reason that this would benefit her. Um, but it comes from a place of joy and, and happiness and, and really a chosen identity, which is her mermaid identity, Euphemia. Um, so there's, there are a lot of things that are handled in a way, in a nuanced way that you can't always like summarize really quickly. Um, and I do have concerns of how people are going to try to like warp that in sure. in brief conversations. But I'm like, I'm very confident and comfortable in what I actually portrayed um, and demonstrating that sometimes the monster makes us look like we're monsters, but the monster is the thing that makes me have to lie about who I am. Yeah, I felt like the way that you wrote the book, in all honesty, it's like if you want to warp it and take it out of context, try and you have to like yeah, you have to you'd really have to look, at it. <laughs> look at it from a from a an antagonistic essentially point yeah. of view because it's not written like that and anybody with a lick of sense would know that it's not written like that and so if you're coming at it from let's tear it apart let's take it out of context let's warp it let's twist it let's make it into something it's not then you have to approach it with that mindset it's not going to be- I mean it, it is an intentional you know it, it is an intentional decision yeah. um, but I just want to I am very happy to know that that what I wrote is respectfully presenting um, ugly choices that Black Americans have historically had to make. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason I've been looking down this whole time, by the way, is because I wanted to find Effie's dad scene. <laughs> oh, I know you're good. Oh. I love I love Jacoby, not because he's a good person, 
Um, okay, yeah. So can we talk about what it, yes. what are your thoughts? Because we talked about Tavia's dad. So um, what are your thoughts on Effie's dad? Okay. Oh, I was mad at him. Yes. A little bit. I was, I was confused. Mad. I, I was angry, but I I was glad that you let us have that moment with them together instead of, you know, he's some monster she could never see. Yes. Um, they, they really had that come together moment with her and Mama Theo. And yeah. It I felt it. like not a resolution all the way, but, you know, like they they bridged a gap um, between each other through Effie. So I, I love that. I just I, I wanted her to have that that sense of belonging. That yeah, I think for a little while she lost when she couldn't go back to the Rinfest. I love the Rinfest right. anyway. I live for the Rinfest, so I was very excited about her being a Black Mermaid. Oh, um, can we clarify something, people? I know mermaids aren't a normal part of Rinfairs. It that's not a mistake. I did it because I wanted to. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't no, know. I, I, I've <laughs> seen mermaids. I've seen them at Rinfest before. So anybody who has a problem with it, can talk about right? It. <laughs> the very first thing is like, are there usually? And I'm like, is it a not normal always. aspect of it? No, but can they be there? Why yeah. not? Like, yeah. I, I've, like, seen them, I've never been but... to a rent fest, so I absolutely had no idea yeah, that, that wasn't a her. normal thing. I'm, so we have it on our bucket there, list. There, there are so <laughs> many things that you guys have to like. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I'm Aladdin with Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Not oh, Aladdin. You. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the thing that I think. I didn't want to try to like oversimplify is what her dad has been doing yeah. in order to get his way, in order to get her there, basically. Um, especially because his dad didn't know about Awaken. Her dad, sorry. Her dad didn't know about Awaken. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, not like he's yeah. just running around killing people and he has no, like, remorse has, for that? He has no power to take it back. He has no power to undo it. He's just like... But you have, but again, we sometimes we'll try to like write every perspective from our known world perspective. Yes. And my thing is like, this isn't his world. His world is the world that you see him in, and that, yeah. and he is, and he's devoted to staying and to having his world. The only reason he is, his connection is the Renaissance Fair. That's yeah. his sort of like, um, that's the veil basically, um, yeah. and that's for the purpose. That was for the purpose of being with Minerva so his world is this world down here so he's not thinking of like the ramifications of like what that does not only not only to the humans that you did that to because you don't know of any way to undo it but also because if she chooses to stay in the human world she's supposedly responsible for this right so like so the parallel between the two dads it's just yeah. like it's my way no matter what it does well and and it's very much like a, and here's the thing i'm a daddy's girl and i this is this is my lived experience is daddy's be, not daddy's being like these daddies but daddy's being like right. this is my baby yeah uh -huh. i'm like i'm gonna have like this is my child i'm gonna have my child um and that's what jacoby is like he's like this is my child. I want her here with me. And now she's getting further and further away. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to yeah. get her to my world. Um, and from a parental perspective, like, of course, that makes sense, uh, particularly because he lost the love of his life. And then instead of getting more time with his daughter or near his daughter, he got less because Mama Theo was the person that she that she ended up living with um and she hadn't turned yet so like you know from his yes so is it permanent like she has to make a choice of how she's living or is it like she can go back and forth between the two she doesn't where we leave the book she doesn't know how to do it or undo it okay so the reason like she needed she still needed um tavia in order to turn you know turn her and then she just sort of turned back at some point and didn't know how so at this point there would be no way for her to live in the real world because she can't control she can't control when she turns now would portland be fine with her turning because of this whole grand thing that they did at the end like 
you know, because if it's the Portland as, as we've portrayed it, which is like really about celebrity and really about like this is ours yeah. and this is our Gorgon, I think they'd be fine with her turning um, huh? because because they feel some sort of ownership over it. Yeah. Um, she's like one of their wonders or whatever. Um, weird. Yeah, right. Keep Portland yeah. weird. So I think that there's, I think that what Tavia expects is that she's going to come home because now you're, it's okay you're that you're a Gorgon. But as, as Mama Theo, as, as we talk about in the next story in the same world, um, white approval is flimsy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I was um, yes, it. With it's the not whole permanent. stone children, right? Yeah. Like I could see in that moment the parents being so overjoyed their children, are right? Home, but, like, but eventually you got to deal with the off. fact that you stole um, about a decade <laughs> from yeah. my child. So the the way I wanted to show that is when the when the girl says or somebody says her younger brother, who I guess is her older brother now, yeah. like yeah. to really express that like time went on without these kids uh-huh. families grew without these kids now the kid is back as the kid and now we've got to go back in time almost yeah. like and and yeah. and go back to parenting this young child who we child. thought we lost almost a decade yeah. ago so yeah i think that approval is going to wear off at some point Definitely. Yeah, because losing a kid can like tear a family apart so like kids who had two parents might not have two right. parents anymore yeah, they might have, could have died. Uh, lives are devastated period like there's no there's no happy there's no happy ending there's a relief yeah that yeah. that they got their children back but there's no happy ending because this time is gone like this child it was frozen in time yeah, yeah. and also the fact that fb wasn't so seeing right moving around again and it's just like okay they're nine they're going back to like the third grade exactly and, Effie and is you're still 17 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that she and now that she knows what she is and also seeing her dad as problematic as what he did in the earth, in the human world is, I think that she is wise enough to be like, they're not going to forgive this, like not long term. And even if they do right now, it's better to be loved from afar than to take the risk of that grace running out um, abruptly, you know, Um because they figured out a way to, to, to call her and dampen siren power. So yes. do you want to be around long enough for them to figure out how to do that to you? Like, also, I can't question. wait for the next book. <laughs> Can we get the next one? <laughs> I also want to know why like Effie decided to come with her because, you know, in so many ways, Tavia could have awoken the kids without Effie being there and it would have just still been blamed on the Sprite. And, you know... I don't know that it would have been... Oh, the whole thing Good. with Effie running around. Sorry. Yeah. I about that so, so Effie is seen on camera doing something. Uh, so they already know that it's not sprites. But the other thing is like, she still could have woken them without Effie showing up. But Effie would have to live with that for the rest of yeah. her life. She needs to see this too. Like she needs to see this undone because she's been living the entire time. Like she's a curse that can't be, you know, all of this damage is is just as soon as she realizes that this is her it's like i'm a monster and i think that it's really important for her sister to be able to give her that to say that you're not a monster you did not know you couldn't control this but i also can undo it for you like i can i can set them free um i think of it as setting her free too which is sort of why she ripples out of her water mirage stage because she's overwhelmed like to to see that these children are alive again and these were her friends these were like her close friends at the time so i think that was really important for her to be there yeah it felt like a nice piece of closure Um, yeah obviously it's not always going to be okay right like 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 we said they have to go to the real world but i like that scene where they like effie is fine yeah, because the kids yeah, are like, we yeah. were just in the middle of a game. Yeah, like, what's going on? <laughs> right. Kids so, are kids. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is going to be a, it's a, it would be hard. And actually, I'm trying to think without, because I know we're allowed to spoil this book. I'm trying to think of what I can say about the next book. But just to say there is a mention of those kids in the, okay. Okay. In the next book. I'm glad to hear that, because I 
I'm so curious about all the entirety of the world that you created, like what's gonna happen with Wallace now that you know Effie is back in the tent and he's not allowed in the tent anymore. And you know, what's gonna happen with Tavia now that she's outed, you know, herself as a siren and she's trying to be an activist. What's gonna happen with her and her dad now that, I don't know, maybe they're on speaking terms now that Effie isn't there. Like in some ways, I feel like Effie was like this buffer where he felt like he could talk to Effie and he couldn't talk to Tavia. And right. I feel like now that, you know, she's grown and he has sort of seen that he can't just hide her anymore, mostly because of mm -hmm. her actions. I'm hoping that they can mend this this rift because I'm a daddy's girl too and so yeah. it's like one of those things where it's just like not being able to talk to your dad to me that seems just like the worst thing. Right. Like <laughs> how do you like yeah. how yeah. do you cope with that? And that's why yeah. I think him treating her like that just hit me so hard. I'm like my dad would yeah. never like how can you right. do this? Yeah. Yes. Well I will say the second book is not about the same characters. Fair enough. Okay. But it's I in the same it. world. But okay. it is in the same world. Yes. Okay. So That's there is, enough. okay, the lead character in the second, in the, I can't say second book because it's not like a second book, but in the next book Portland. is someone from this book, but oh. it's not, it's, it's not Effie or Tavia. Is it Naima? I was going to say that. I hope she's still alone. <laughs> oh, she pissed me off. <laughs> Ah, I wanted to fight her so I, bad. Like part of me when I read with the part at the, towards the end when she's like, "Look, I like I'm trying to be reasonable with you. Just get rid of the video." She's like, "Oh yeah, I'm done." But it was a live stream, so ha, jokes on you. And she was like, "Stoner." Tavia is just like, you know what, stoner. And she's just like, "Whoa, wait a second. And then she's like, "Stoned." And I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. But then also before she did, she could use Awaken. Like she really was cool with this girl just like dying right then and there. She <laughs> also, cause if we're gonna talk about, if we're gonna talk about the nuance of people, not only did she not know about Awaken when she did that, mm -hmm. she also compelled Effie to do that. Yeah. So it's just like, you oh. told somebody else to literally like your sister to you, kill somebody. But you literally it. did what sirens are what everybody fears. Everybody yeah. fears. Yeah. Oh. There's so much <laughs> to it. She kinda had a comment. <laughs> See, that's the thing, is like how like do, do we forgive this because I we know. feel like she deserved it, but then why does this black girl uniquely deserve it? My the whole exactly. for me, the next yeah. book is very much about Everybody says that we're ready for an angry black girl. Everybody says we're ready for a black girl who's who is completely unapologetically herself and blah blah. And I'm yeah. like, we'll see. Are we? We will yeah. see because Naima is pissed. Um. <laughs> oh, that girl. But I like the depth of her character because she's still like that scene in the pool where uh, one of the other girls asks Effie, like, why is your hair so long? And Naima's like, you can't. Don't ask her that. And right. She is the thing. The thing is, she is still a black girl, and she's yeah. in the network. She's in the network. And I think that's what makes she me is. dislike her. Is just because you know, and you know that you know, and you know that I know that you know, and then you're still gonna act like this, like, bruh, ain't nobody got time. All right. The, the thing. The, the thing is, one hundred percent. You're like Naima. Why? But I'm sorry. I'm I think sorry. it will be easy to see that there's also a culture of authenticity around the network and around sirens because sirens are only black women that we have to look at how we are treating how we're making other people feel who are within i call naima my killmonger because Ooh, okay. she's because a lot of times she ain't wrong and you're also not taking responsibility for your role in in creating this person um so i definitely think and of course and yes i went there i am a natural girl okay but i yes i went there yes naima's hair is relaxed and yes she knows that means you think she's not proud of being a black girl um the problem with Naima is she is not going to react the way you want her to react to that. Yes. She she is not yeah. going she is not going to concede. She is not going to kiss the ring like that's she's grown up with a lot of privilege from being a loco and she's also like why is that my fault? Um so there's definitely like she is dead wrong for what she does in the courtyard 
And Tavia is dead wrong for what she did in the courtyard. Like, come on, yeah, we know who she is. Too she well compared, double, right? But you know, exactly. That she vacation <laughs> feels so nice in the moment. It does in the moment, but then it's like, okay, you also did this outside. You yeah. all both, you both also yeah. did this outside. Yeah. So is that is who does that help? Like, and I feel like it's one of those things where, uh, like, we so often it's it's cool until we have to figure out why. So like, when you're angry yeah. and you're like, oh, this person deserves it. But okay, so how do you then determine who deserves this and well, who right. doesn't? Because yeah. Naima, because she's sure, she's still a black girl. She's still a black girl, right? So it's like, yeah. are we gonna erase all of her lived experience as a black girl because she's a loco? Like, okay. we're gonna act like she's never been through anything, but she understood it well enough to be a part of the network. Come on, she's either black or she ain't. Like she, you know, yeah, you can't, you can't have it both ways. She's yeah. playing both sides of the fence, and she's like the, the collar thing, just wearing. The it, it's just listen, like, listen. Oh. That look. There's no. De <laughs> there is no <laughs> defense. There is no, no defense, and I'm not trying to give her a defense. But I also find it interesting. I didn't have to try to give Tavia a defense for what she does at the end of the book. Everybody just came up with one for her because she's this sympathetic Ooh. black girl. It was yes. like, oh no, I know, but I really understood. You did. You understood her compelling her sister against her will to stone a black girl she didn't know she could unstone? Not that understood, reveals, but in that, that moment, because it's told from her perspective, you feel her anger. And that's mostly because you're you feel, writer. Yes. But when you but, well, sit down and think about it outside of it, it's but just that's, like this, that's my <laughs> thing with, and what I, what I like to challenge with literature period, and particularly the way that we read as, as, as uh, Westerners, we believe and trust or we're inclined to whoever's telling the story. We know that that's a problem. We know that that is unfair based on what we determine history is. We believe whoever is telling the story, even if our lived experience says, don't do that. Yep. That's like directly against your self-interest. So I'm like, okay, what happens when, yes, this is the right sympathetic black girl. This is the, this is the black girl you're supposed to sympathize with, but I'm gonna have you watch her do something Yep. that is completely indefensible uh -huh. and i know you're gonna come up with a defense for her that you wouldn't and here's the problem if that was gonna extend to black women as a whole then okay you're breeding empathy for black women but we know that's not why readers are doing it you're doing it because she's the protagonist and i know that because then you take a, a character that i've shown you is on this person's side whether they interpersonally like each other or not i've shown you that she is working to protect this person and because she's not the main black girl people have no problem hating naima and i'm not saying that she doesn't actually do wrong things but she does right things too and it's so easy to forgive the right black girl yeah. and to demonize literally everybody else that's why i don't deal in exceptions i don't like exceptions because i know that that's just a way to you know what is that called um a oh, bottleneck us where it's like one or two of y'all are gonna get through but the rest of you are gonna keep getting treated a certain way i'm not down for that i'm not down for i get to come forward and then you continue treating all these other black women the way that you've been treating them. i'm not i don't i don't roll like that so yeah. i wanted to challenge like because the first thing that I was asked was, well, what's the what's the reason for telling Naima's story? Well, what are you talking about? Not. Like, why? I'm like, is there, you're going to, okay, well, what, what was the reason for all of these, these 1600 uh, fantasy books with white girl leads? What What's the individual reason for each of them to deserve a story, right? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. The, her story is its own provocation. I think people will see that. Yeah. But I, but I, specifically wanted to say why are you so convinced she's an antagonist mm, yeah. i'm not saying she didn't do anything wrong i'm saying why are you so convinced she's an antagonist because your protagonist did something wrong too yeah, yeah. um i want i want any forgiveness that you direct towards and obviously we're talking to non-black people here uh any forgiveness that you can direct to one individual black person if it doesn't extend to recognizing acknowledging and celebrating the humanity of all black people you can keep it yeah. Okay, so, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of another favorite spot that I want to talk about because. Yes. Okay. First of all, I do love the two Jennifers. Yes, my sister, my real sister's name is Jennifer, and we all wear bangles on our left arm. I so 
she knew when I made because the two Jennifers are actually white girls. Yeah, so I made the two Jennifers, and one of them has bangles on, and she's like, really, like, I, really? I see you. I see you. Speaking oh. of, okay, the two Jennifers reminds me of the YouTuber. Oh my gosh, that reveal that she was a siren. Um, the YouTuber that yeah. uh, Camilla Fox. Yes, Camilla, Camilla Fox. Fox. Thank you. What a great reveal. I love I that. Loved. And all of a sudden now, because it's somebody popular, now everybody's like, well, we should defend sirens. Yeah. Until until it's time to turn our shirts inside out. Inside out, huh? Yeah. All of a sudden. And can we go back but to, but to when they were first introduced? The moment that got me for the Jennifers was when that, like, legitimate confusion, when they were like, you have to watch videos on how to do your own hair? And I'm Man, just like, girl. oh, my God, this is, this is the you, reason. You knew, you knew I was going to put something like I that did. in there. Come on now. I loved it. You knew it was oh. coming. I, I didn't call the case for this one, but I was telling ah, Ben about the recognition. it. recognition. And... <laughs> I was just like, this right here is the thing that people need to read and need to see and need to understand. And when they are like representation, doesn't matter. You should be able to find yourself in anything and everybody. Oh, it's what on the inside oh. that matters. I'm like, it's this, this right here. The fact that you yep. can so effortlessly find yourself and see so many different ways that you look beautiful, different ways to do things, different ways to just be yourself and it's celebrated and it's there and you see yourself everywhere. And the fact that you think it's strange for me to have to go out and intentionally find someone who can teach me how to be myself my best self and you yeah. not only think it's strange you at first think it's laughable and then you completely appropriate it you take it out of context you say that you're for the cause and then when it comes down for the pavement to hit the road you turn turn your shirts inside out and you run and you're the first one off the scene and you're want to be like i'm not here and it's like that's yeah. not okay this is why this has to be a topic this is why we have to discuss it this is this why, is why when you mean black say black this is why i don't like reviews of this book that say this is a book about two girls of color no it's not no, no. They're black. it's about two black, it's about girls. two black girls it's about two black girls um don't try and i've said this before don't try to break this book's spine trying to fit everybody in it when don't nobody do that for us so there are <laughs> there are women of color in this book who get it to the extent that they get it right because altruism is the one who corrects jennifer mm -hmm. but as soon as it's her neck on the line her and whatever she down. thinks that means her hair down. comes down her her piercings are obscured her shirt is turned inside out because what she's not willing to be is confused for a black woman so <laughs> listen and that and that in that moment is from a place of fear of a place of terror it's it's not shown as an intentional uh situation where she's constantly being anti-black it's shown as there is a place for you to escape from a torment that is specifically targeting me yeah so That's i don't say women of color when i mean black women for a reason yeah. Yeah. And because i'm i'm talking about a that. specific listen i've tweeted it so many times like yeah. <laughs> say black Please. Just, just say black. It's Don't. Not a, it's not a bad word. It's, it's not, not a bad word, word at all. At all. If it's I'm talking about black women, I'm talking about black women. I'm not, I'm not talking about all non-white women. I'm talking specifically about black women, um, and we know this because, like I said, when it comes time for solidarity centered around our particular pain, ain't nobody got time to listen to that. Ain't nobody got time to march for that. When we're talking about even uh, wage equality. People are talking about uh, women make less, make this when it comes to men. No, break that down by race, sis. Break that down by race, because that's not yeah, right. That, no. White women make more than men of color. So that can't be right. The only people who make more than you are white men. So that's not a true statement. I don't make what white women make, right? I literally did. I will show you a tweet that I did that is, you know, the scene from, from, uh, from Titanic where she's like, paint me like one of your French girls. So yeah. I took that and made them, uh, took that meme and said, pay me like one of your white girls. Because That's listen, <laughs> because, let, because let's not pretend that we don't have to right. break this even within gender. We got to break this down by race because our experience is different. Absolutely. Wildly Absolutely. different. 
And indigenous women, you can't talk. You can't talk about indigenous yes. women and what they deal with by talking about what women deal with. Like, what are you no. doing? Don't don't act like you're brand new. These are specific. These are very very specific and targeted um, experiences and offenses. So, I really I wanted to demonstrate somebody who she had a connection with doing what always happens and and yeah. showing that and and her awakening so she awakens altruism mm -hmm. yeah and that for altruism is and i i don't know if if i don't know if everybody will will see it but she stops because yeah. she because she gets it now like she yeah. her awakening is like what did you just do yep and in, and that fear and that that running uh, stops because she's like, wait a minute, this is right. Like, why why was I doing this? So um, your true and that to me is meant to say her true desire is to be an ally. But like I said before we started recording, I'm not interested in allies. I'm interested in accomplices. So in this situation. If altruism was really an accomplice, she should be standing directly next to the siren. Because if you're not, then you're not marching with me. You're not marching for me. You're not concerned about my humanity. You're not concerned about my equality. Um, you're concerned about keeping a safe distance while you say all the right things. But I don't need you. I don't need you to say stuff. Yeah, I don't need you to say stuff. I need you to show up. Yeah. And when she awakens, that's what she does. She stands there with her. Yeah. So. Really great. That actually and, reminds me of, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chelsea. We're going to keep talking over each other. It's just, we're too excited. Uh, I was going to say that I love the nuance I I of it, topic. but you go. Yeah. I, um, the teacher. You know, that cool teacher. Uh, Monroe? Me, oh, oh, not Mr. Monroe. Me. You're talking, you're talking no, about no. Miss Fish. Homegirl. Miss Homegirl. Miss yeah. Fish. I was so Fish. mad for Effie. But that's so for real. And it, but that's it is. That's so real, though. And that's what they do. And I think one of my agent, I, it was either my agent or my editor's, it, like, just marginal, uh, margin notes was, like, yeah. cut her. <laughs> As in, like, with a knife. <laughs> yes. Not from the story. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. It was just so upset. And I was like, but this is real. I, I, real. and the thing is, like, being in IB, um, all of, you know, my high school experience, I was actually probably more likely to run into a teacher like Miss Fish. Because they think that they're really getting down to the nitty gritty, and you're like, you're not. Yeah, it's like you're, you're not at way. all. When you're the it's only exactly. black person like in a class, and a person of authority who does yeah. not look like you feels like they are the authority, they will say yes. whatever they want. And oh, absolutely. Unaware of your existence, your presence, or even the way that you're looking at them, or the way that they're making you feel, because they are so convinced that they are right, and it's the only yeah. way that it could possibly be. Because there is no way that their history could be wrong. What they've been taught is inaccurate. Yeah. That what they know is false. And because you are not in a place of authority, because you're not in a place to say I know better, even if you do, they continue on spouting idiot, idiots, idiocy like fountains right. in a park. It's just recycled but nonsense. But the wonderful thing is if you ever had me in your class or in university, because I so many times in sociology, I was like, no, I'm going to I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to go ahead and stop you right there. Yes, this is UC Santa Cruz. Yes, there are like 100 students in here. I'm going to stop you right there because what you say <laughs> right now is going to be treated like gospel. And it's completely biased and ridiculous what you just said. But I'm sorry. I just have to read something from the Miss Fish scene. Oh, my God. No, because this right. was so fun to write. Um, okay. So, I've heard you kids saying, speak siren in these halls, Miss Fisher was saying, even though she absolutely had not. It's one of those things attributed to teenagers that nary a real life teen would say, but the truth didn't matter as much as being extra, so she kept going. I get it. I totally get it. We should all speak like sirens. Use our voices to make a difference because all of them matter. Oh, go ahead. Caught it. You know we caught it. You know we caught it. All voices matter. Oh. <laughs> voices as long as they're not from black women <laughs> as long as what we mean is my voice matters as a white person once again <laughs> whiteness is. being inherently exclusionary always assumes that anybody else talking about themselves are saying it to the exclusion of others and the funny thing is like how can you 
subjugate and like oppress people and then at the same time be jealous of them and be like no but i want to be i want to i want to have that experience too i'm like you don't get to be the victor and the victim please calm no. down what? You want to be the shooter and the dead man? I don't understand. But they never want to be the dead man. That's the weird part. They're never like, why aren't we getting shot by police? Right? I'm sorry. I loved Miss Fisher. That was so great. Oh, gosh. That was a great scene. And just the way that she was like, well, but this, you know, there's a siren. But you know what I love about your book and your writing in general is just the fact that even when it's it's meant to be what it's meant to be, like Miss Fish is irritating and you don't like her because she's not meant to be liked because she is yeah. meant to invoke these. Because she's emotions. she's doing exactly what you think she's doing. Yes. And yes. I just, it, it's so good. And I remember even like when the case and I were talking off screen before we recorded anything, we were just like, it's so well written. It's so good. Like how though? Like, but why? Like, I don't understand because <laughs> there. And, like, <laughs> I want that to be, the, that to be the blurb. The net, the blurb on my next book is how the why. <laughs> like, <laughs> how, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Y'all see him doing this, right? Like, oh, the audacity. Me today. The audacity. Oh. I do not know what is up. And he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm looking out the window. I'm looking out the window, mom. Calm down. Wow. This tells you. He has the nerve to be happy. I swear, if you're not watching him 100% of the time, he will do evil things. He, That's the child. Know, he's so, he's such a good dog. He's such, he's a good dog when he's being watched. Exactly. <laughs> he's a good dog when he knows you're looking at him. Yes. Yep. The minute there I look go. away, because he doesn't realize that this is a camera and I can see him. Right. Yeah. Sorry. This is what this is what we giggle. I giggle about it every time we talk because he's always just like towing the line. He's getting as close as he can. He's always, he gets away with it, it with Ben up. because so Ben is the. Song. Well, you can always tell. You can always tell somebody's letting him get away with it because he keeps trying. Yeah, he's like she'll break. Okay, like, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Had a moment, and now he wants to be all fun to me. Like, what? I love you. It's so great. No, no. I know what you did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she's still petting him as she's petting him. Yeah. No, absolutely he's not. Her. No. He's my emotional support no. animal. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's winning. He's winning. <laughs> he knows he's winning. Definitely. It's 100%. Um, um, speaking of winning, Effie and Wallace kissing. Yes. I just had to say that. I keep throwing out little tidbits that I love. I'm sorry, Chelsea. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm with you. Like, I, I love the little... I love Wallace! You know what I, I love Wallace. My favorite moment, though, was, like, when Naima went up to her and Wallace while they were sitting at yes, the diner. Yes, at and, and, yes. and Effie was just like, you know what? What is your problem with me? Like, and Wallace was and like, then, are you stalking her? <laughs> and then she was like, I have better things to do than just bother you and your sister. And she's just like, then why are you at my table? I don't understand. <laughs> she's like, you tell me as you walk directly to me. Yeah, Loved yeah. it. And Wallace is just side eyeing like, ooh, she got you. I love that Effie is so proud of herself for, for thinking of it in the moment, though. Yeah. Because she's like, like usually oh. that would have come to me later tonight in bed. I'm super proud of myself because I thought of it on the spot. Like, high five. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, it. I live for that moment because I love how Wallace is so, like, team Effie even before you know why. Yes, He's exactly. Like, He's just sitting there like, I have no interest in you. Like, Naima's at the pool trying to flirt with him. He's just like, eh. Nah, not interested. And then at, yeah, at the diner, he's just like, why are you here? Like, bro, nobody asked you. Nobody invited can, you to this party. Can we, can I point something else out that Naima doesn't get credit for? And yes, I am definitely very much about Naima right now because hers is the last story I wrote. But we know she's with Priam now, right? Why is she Oh, with, gosh. Yeah. Okay. But we know that she's quietly with Priam right now, right? So if she was if she was a mean girl and if she was like who she's supposed to be, wouldn't she have been rubbing that huh. in uh, Tavia's face from the beginning? Because she's been Not with that. him the whole time. Yeah, I feel like makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> I have my theories. Obviously, you're the author, so they could all. Wait, look, she can't, she can't get credit for nothing. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Only because the girls in high school are just mean. And I'm just like, there's no way. But and when I read it, I was just thinking like, 
Oh, I thought it, like, and this could be so wrong. I'm just like, Priam is blonde and Naima is a dark skinned local girl. I thought that's why they were keeping it quiet. Not necessarily because it had anything to do with Tavia, because later she's just hey, like, he's, a, he's a loco too. Hmm? He's a loco too, though. Yes, but I didn't know if it was one of those things where it's just like, but she's still a black girl. And, but he was you know, with, but he was with girl. Tavia. But but he but was did with Tavia. Know that, though? Yeah, okay. they went to the the football game together. They were hanging out with his Aloko friends. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, no, she just mm -hmm. wasn't rubbing it in old girl's face for some reason. Huh. I guess that disproves my theory right there. Naima just can't get love. credit for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, but the only reason I thought that it wasn't intentional was because she was just when she when Naima not Naima why am I mixing up their names when Naima and Tavia met up in the shipyard or whatever she was like oh yeah I didn't ask your permission and she was literally rubbing it in her face at that moment and I was just like why yeah she because think because she thought Tavia had come to at to tell her she wanted Priam back yeah. That's what Tavia, that's what Naima thought she had called her out there for, which in itself would be a slap in the face because it's like, you knew I was going to show up because I'm in the network, even though it's like butt crack of dawn in the morning. So you called me out here to try to get your ex-boyfriend back and when you know that I'm with him? Like, come on. That's what Naima that's thought was Naima. going on there. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. And Naima, and Naima would be like, and I certainly don't need your pity. She um, <laughs> She was like, out of my face. She'd be like, how dare you? Um, but, but I'm just like, I. it's not like I decided after the fact to have Naima not be a total awful person. I yeah. intentionally wrote her a yeah. certain way in this book. And I'm just like totally shocked that not just you guys, not yeah. only a couple of people, everybody rewrote her everybody rewrote her and i'm like listen we are not trained to like more than one black girl at a time i'm just saying not, like, that is such a good crazy. point like like you know the like one and done or like like you were saying the right type of black girl it's gotta yep. be a black girl who like hates herself i've noticed exactly. like that's know. what we're talking you know what about I mean? so naima is the wrong kind of black girl because she is not lacking in self-confidence at all she, she is she loves, loves herself it. naima loves her some naima so i think that she yeah. inherently is the wrong Yes. is the wrong kind of black girl and also yes. when she gets upset if she feels that it's valid which she has valid reason she's yeah. like okay i'm unapologetically you are on my shit list now so oh i hope mm -hmm. i can say that on your channel i'm sorry yeah you're fine oh, yeah, you're um, good. Good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's like so it's like i think that the, one of the main reasons I wanted to write a story for her because I had no intention of doing another book like this um, one of the reasons I wanted to write it was because of how people responded to her regardless of what yeah. I built in to show that she has been on this girl's side even though she didn't like her um, I guess so I was like no I, I'm like I want to know why we can all say team killmonger knowing that he is a villain knowing that he killed like black women in the movie like and girlfriend. still yeah. his own girlfriend <laughs> he he picks up an elder by her neck oh, right and right. people were still like killmonger was right and i was like couldn't you have said nakia was right because they because nakia because Na it's the misogynoir i'm sorry it is really really deeply imprinted on us and if we are gonna like a black girl she's gonna be the only one um so i'm like yeah i want to see why it was so easy for people to i guess sort of rewrite naima for their for their minds when it's it's clearly been possible for people to love villains even when they were legit villains yeah interesting because when you bring it up it's like i'm i'm one of those people where i like i absolutely love killmonger like i loved him more than the black panther that's just who i am it's probably because it's michael b jordan in the movie i just i like him ah, whatever I have my biases <laughs> but <laughs> it like just honestly though when like when you were talking about it i was thinking about it i was like okay why is it that i don't like naima and i didn't like her throughout the book and it's not necessarily for because she was like you said because she was just mean it was just like because what did she do before prom what did she do to anybody it was just the fact for me it was just like 
she she's showing up late to to choir practice and she's seeming to have a problem with tavia she's seeming to have a problem she with showed tavia. up late because she had to do this a loco thing that the principal of the school asked her to do fair enough I she was, tells you that when she comes in right fair enough and that's but that's what i'm saying like uh, also being that's what i'm thinking about it like well why yeah. didn't i like her and that's like oh because that's how tavia saw it and right. when you look at it from an objective yeah. standpoint you're just like you're right she had to, something else to do she couldn't just tell the principal no i can't show up because i've got choir practice and you know she really didn't do anything to deserve it like you know her antagonizing effie when she was at the diner with wallace is like okay that's kind of annoying but also like they're teenagers. It's, they're teenagers. It's, pe it's people. They don't get along, and they're teenagers. Up until, and I, I literally said this even like in the editorial like process. I was like, "Tell me something Naima does to either of them before prom." Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like she doesn't do it. She's annoying, and teenagers are annoying. She's pretty, <laughs> she's right. and she's annoying. popular, yeah. and she she's, pretty she's pretty, and she's popular, popular, and she's really proud of herself, and really loves herself, and does not so suffer from any of the self like loathing or or yeah. insecurity that the that the main ones do. Yeah, yeah. But what did she do wrong? And that's it. It's like now that we're actually talking about it, and we're like looking at it from a truly objective standpoint, and not through Tavia's viewpoint. Naima, there's no reason to dislike Naima outside of what she did at prom. But even so, when you're looking but at then it from an objective you, standpoint, Tavia is she, also wrong. Tavia does yeah. something awful at at, at uh, prom. But okay, I will give you that Naima does her wrong thing first because she shows up wearing this wearing this collar and that yeah. is a trauma that is a trigger specific to a black woman so that is completely deplorable she does it at the end of the story in which she has been cast as a villain by these girls for no reason so to me she's 100 wrong but it's also like how have you been convincing yourselves while i've been protecting you right while I've been protecting you this entire time, while I've been, you know, I'm a very like popular public person and I've been hush hush with my relationship for why? Because you used to date the guy, right? Um, so there's all of this stuff that's like, I'm actually helping you, but because I'm not doing it in a way that's like down in the mouth or like, you know, apologetic or something, you're treating me like I'm actually antagonizing you when I'm not. So here's what antagonization would actually look like. Cause this Naima and she will get to that point. Right. Um, <laughs> right? She, will, she will get there. Um, I'm not saying like she's 16 and it's just like, she's still and like, she, trying she to help is, you. And I she's like, I've been trying to help you this whole time. And you're going, uh, you, I'll give you something to cry about. Like it's, yeah. she, she definitely, she definitely is a beast, but she wasn't. <laughs> you know, really she... good point. Yeah, we have to think about it. I, I, I'm actually kind of reminded of a Bell Hooks. Um, Bell Hooks was talking about a class she was teaching, and it was you know mixed gender, mixed race, and all the students would, would like love hearing stories of um, black students like hating their blackness, and like they would all rally around those stories. And Bell Hooks was like, hold on a second, does anybody have a story about like enjoying being black or loving being black? And the whole class was like, like. A look of why would anybody love that you know and it's it's just this is making me think about those ways that yeah. we internalize we're yeah. supposed to like hate stores we're supposed to hate black people who show out or are unapologetic like the way people treat know, specifically like black you know, women exactly yes. because look at how people treat kanye versus how they treat lizzo explain to me what the difference is, is who is lizzo hurting and why is it not okay for her to be like i'm genius yes this dude has been saying it He's been saying it for the whole career. Does anybody actually like Kanye though? Uh, yeah, oh, they gosh, sure yeah. are showing up for his. They sure are showing up for all of his. <laughs> he has a freaking dystopian-looking uh, wardrobe <laughs> that people buy. People show up to these supposed churches he started. This. Uh, I was really about to say a word that I really don't know if I'm allowed to say here, but if I'm being real colloquial, <laughs> I can cut it out. This, you know what? 
is over here having church services. I'm supposed yes. to trust your theology? What are we doing? People are showing up for these things. Yes, people love Kanye. People yes. love when a because a man, it's like he's a tortured, misunderstood artist. Yes. And I love his hustle and I love his self-confidence. Protected. But then Lizzo, but then Lizzo is supposed to be doing something wrong because she's like, I'm fire. Yeah. Can you play the flute? I can't. Can oh, you play the flute? I'm too wrapped. Listen. Dancing, she's doing it all. She's she's doing her, and she's proud of who she is, and she is clearly confident. But black girls are taught: don't be fast, and don't be loud, and don't be mad, and don't don't be cocky, and don't bring attention Mm -hmm. to yourself. And look, there's no place for us to be confident and unapologetic at the same time. People are okay with you being confident as long as they get to see you bleed a little bit. Amen. So if you so if you are going to be super duper confident, I want to hear about a time. I want you to really get vulnerable, and I want to hear about a time that you actually hated yourself. Um, Naima doesn't have one. I love that for her, and I want that for I me. Do. I love it. And <laughs> she doesn't yes. have one. She doesn't have one. Imagine what this world would be if none of us had that. I would just. <laughs> I'm going to be honest because I don't. I don't autobiographically write. But yeah. I would be lying if I said Naima isn't the character I have most uh, related to. I feel it. You're writing yeah, for homegirls. I, I like that though. But I, I think we need to write for girls like that. And I think because I was- because I was told because I was and listen, my dad, my daddy was probably the only one who was like, "You're doing it. You're doing it." <laughs> <Everybody> <laughs> <I'm serious. laughs> because every because everybody else would be like, oh, you're talking to me. I remember in in fifth grade, I loved Mrs. Jutan. She was like my favorite teacher at the time. And then I look back and remember that my nickname was Babbling Bethany. And I'm trying to, and I'm trying to think of how often I would have had to talk to be called Babbling Bethany in a, in a gate program with what? 90 something percent white boys. So you're telling me that I talked more than these white boys who never raised their hands, but I had a nickname. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy mm-hmm. because like when I sit here and I and I talk to you and I like take the moment to actually sit and think on my thoughts and why I'm thinking that way and that meta- metacognition skill that I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. it's just like you really have to check yourself and you really have to think about it and put it into perspective and run it through like not just one filter but like eight and really be like okay but why okay but why so we okay but why oh, right. Wow. And no, and, and I'm like, if we have to do that, like, if we have to do that, do you understand how much everybody else needs to read these stories? Like, yes. I was like, I am writing to Black girls because Black girls deserve to see themselves. When I get messages from Black girls who are like, you just described my hair routine in a book that so many people are going to read this is a, no like girls have told Seriously. me that they have cried over that and at yeah. first i'm like i can't compute that because i'm the author i can't compute like you caring enough yeah. about what i wrote but when i think about the fact that the reason i wrote it is because i never saw it yeah yeah i'm like yeah what would it have been like to, to read it. somebody say your hair isn't bad because you're black your hair is damaged because you're doing and using products that were made for someone else yes, yes. that so is your yes. your hair is thirsty your hair is is brittle because it's thirsty it's not because you're black there's not like so putting that i put that intentionally in the work and yet i'm still so overwhelmed when people respond to it when black girls respond to it like oh my gosh you said this in writing and like yeah. you know so i don't have to say it today because you said it and if they like, yes, that's who I'm writing it to. But like I said, I'm about literacy, right? So yeah. we're literate in white Americanness. I need for them to get literate in our work so that if you feel uncomfortable, just sit with it, just own it. That's part of not being centered and having the expectation of always being centered. So I'm like, if we have to use this metacognition to like, you know, filter through and and purge ourselves and excavate all of this stuff. Imagine, imagine who actually needs 
to read and comprehend and ingest these stories. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it's one of those things where I like I have so many thoughts and they're in diverging paths <laughs> right now because I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking like, you know, people often I don't know I don't understand this narrative of how like people like to spin that, you know, black children aren't as smart or they're I don't, literally like they're just not as smart as the other kids and I'm just like no the difference is in a lot of ways like while you're sitting here like literally learning one culture we're sitting over here having to learn two like there's we have to learn how to be versed in yours but also be versed in ours and have some and, and that comes ourselves. and for black Americans that genuinely comes to second nature the real issue is you're sitting here doing math and statistically, we're sitting here doing math and generational trauma and processing that our mom works multiple jobs and might not be home when we get there. And also that I don't know if I have lunch money today. And also that when I get home, I have to watch my one of my siblings or something so my parents can work. And also, so you get to go to school. And just be a student. And you're just at school. Yeah. Yeah. The difference isn't eugenics, beloved. The difference is you are carrying one plate and we are from birth expected to carry and, and, uh, expertly navigate, you know, but we're supposed to carry and juggle all of these things that adults, including things that adults would be thinking about yeah. and do it at the same time and do it while being abused because some of the worst abuses that black children go through are in school systems. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then, like I said, to have biases that will increase your chances of being um, punished and taken out of regular classes. I was in special classes all of my life and I got a nickname that made it sound like I was disruptively talkative, even though I have no memory of being disruptive. Because if I was disruptive, you would have probably sent me to the principal's office or I would have gotten in trouble or you'd call my parents. But what you did instead was give me a public nickname so that the whole class could tell me to shut up whenever they felt like it because Bethany's talking too much. So you're trying to program not only me to, to, to erase me and quiet me and shrink me, you're giving everybody here permission to do it. We got to deal with that at school too, and that's just and that's a nonviolent one, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's me being the smart kid. That's me being in special classes, and that happened to yep. me for an entire year. Other kids, white boys, called me babbling Bethany constantly because the teacher did it, so she gave them permission to do it. Yeah. And it's just like I said, my thoughts are going in like eight million directions I feel like I have so much sight to just sit and think on but also going back to what you said about you know getting those messages from black girls who read your books um I was literally sitting here this morning before I got on with the case before I did anything about you know like what my next book was going to be because we just finished mm -hmm. yours and I was just like I want more black girl fantasy but it's just like so much fantasy is there they're not black girls in them if they mm -hmm. are they're very minor characters and I'm like you know and I thought about it because I, I saw a video on YouTube and they were recommending books. And I think one of them was like the Six of Crows or something like that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And it's just like not to take away from those authors because not taking away from the skill, the talent, the effort, the hard work, the journey, none of it. It's just that after, and mind you, I'm, I think I'm younger than both of you because I know I'm younger than the case. But it's just like, but after like 25 years, I'm just really exhausted from having to look around what this character looks like and having to forcefully find myself in other aspects of this yeah. character to relate to. You and have to read Legendborn. You're from North Carolina. You're a black girl from North Carolina. You yeah. want to read a fantasy about a black girl from North Carolina? Legendborn by Tracy Dion is coming out this year. And it is a go. fantasy about that basically is... um. It's part of the King Arthur sort of mythology. Oh, so, right but it takes alley. place, but it also takes place in North Carolina and the that main is. character is a black girl. So I would absolutely, yeah. I literally, so I've read the beginning of the book and she's supposed to be sending me a physical copy someday, maybe. Um, <laughs> because I, I have such, I have such a hard time with reading online or like reading on my, on a device yeah. or something. 
but I can still vividly see every single scene that I read like literally it's a it's a movie in my brain so it's so good she's so she's so so good um but you have to read that legend born by tracy dion okay well, that's specifically for you like, you have to read it i will i will i will definitely <laughs> read it i was just like i said i was just thinking that it's nice to read books like the ones that you wrote the receipt i have a blade so black i haven't read it yet yes but i want to read it and it's just like the books that i haven't read i have read the bells and I've been reading things like Dread Nation and just being able to, as an adult, for like pretty much the mm -hmm. first time, read books with characters yeah. who look like me so I don't have to look around right. the, the character to see, okay, well, I'm kind of like this or I'm kind of like that. And fit or myself. forget that I'm black. Right. I got to forget that I'm black so I can enjoy this story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the privilege that these characters have and the things that they're allowed to do that I would never in a million years right. be able to. Right. And it's just like, to have to try to go back to, to that from reading right no there, it's like it's exhausting and look we're not going to... back we're not going back we this is why back. me this yeah. is why me and my network are pushing so hard in traditional publishing we're not going back we can't yeah. there's no way you, because it's like you, once you you're not going to be proud like... of the fact that you have like eight people and now be like okay we're done no you're not because we all got more work in the first place and we're all talking to aspiring authors and black women who are trying to get into um into traditional publishing so no this is this is never going to be enough this has oh, been yes. so freaking amazing thank you but, so much bethany thank you for letting me talk it. about my book and actually talk yes. about it yes. <laughs> yeah we loved it so i'll be Absolutely. taking like half your like all of your day we really appreciate you being here <laughs> thank you so much all right you guys that is it for this written a melanin video thank you guys so much for watching you are amazing if you haven't already please go ahead and tap the like button subscribe to the channel turn on your notifications and then head over to lacasis channel to do the same because we love her Talk to us down in the comments about what you think, what you would ask Bethany if she was still here in the time that you actually see this. Drop a heart if you don't know what to say to us and we will heart it back. And that is it. Thank you guys again so, so much. And until next time, we hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye.